Hello and welcome to Hydrogen at Home. I just wanted to do another little video as a follow-up to yesterday's video. Um, just wanted to show you this cube cell in here. Something I didn't show that I did a little while ago. I added a, uh, if you can see that, a stainless steel sleeve that goes all the way around the outside of it. Um, that did improve the performance a little bit. I just wanted to talk about, basically, in my own words and for anyone who doesn't already know, just wire the new cell over here, uh, which I'll talk about more in a sec, uh, works so much better than these open cells, given that it's completely sealed. I'm just going to turn this on so I can give you a practical demonstration of that. I've got a little lead here. I know some of you have probably seen this before, but it's interesting to watch. Now that, you can see that lighting up. That is not touching the steel at all, it's just near the plate. That's picking up on the current that is feeding through the water or the electrolyte, and it's basically wasted. Um, it's 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 allowing the current to flow around the cell and link up directly with the other terminal, um, rather than passing through the plates and creating gas. So uh, basically, we need to stop that from happening as much as possible. Okay, so I've got this all wired up. I'm going to turn it on. Right now, that's running about 12 amps. I'm going to let this run now for a good hour with the lid on, bubbling through the bubble bucket. And I'm, I've already taken a reading and um, it's settling back down to um, a bit under 12 amps and it's putting out about 550 milliliters a minute. Um, I have got my garage shed door open so I don't have to worry about the gas and yeah I'll um, come back and see how it's performing in a little while till then okay we're just over 10 minutes in now and um, the amperage really hasn't changed it's sitting still on 12 amps the container has barely heated up at all it's if anything, I would call it lukewarm. And you can see it's still bubbling out fine there. The water itself is still beautiful and clear. Now that is tap water. Uh, as I've said before, I'm sure that will go uh, dirty eventually, but for the time being, it still looks pretty good. It was fresh, so it has only been running for about 10 minutes. But that was only running for about 15 minutes, and it was getting dirty within a, a minute. Um, which brings me to a quick point I wanted to make about um, terminals like this. Uh, I will no longer be using these kind of terminals in a closed tank situation. It's just too dangerous. Um, the amount of gas that I'm talking about creating now is just too much. You know, in an open in an open container, it's fine because the gas dissipates so quickly that it's not going to cause an explosion. But in a con concealed container like this, or this in particular, um, if there's a short, uh, or if it arcs, um, it's kaboom. So I'm not going to do that anymore, and I recommend to everyone that they do the same. Um, I'm going to let this run a bit longer, and um, check it again in a little while. Okay, um, it's now been half an hour since I started this test. Uh, a very interesting thing just happened. I had to just turn this off for um, a couple of minutes and restart it because um, I was going around and checking the temperature of all these terminals and noticed that this terminal here was getting extremely hot um, and on closer inspection I noticed that um, it was damaged. Uh, that happened a couple of weeks ago when I was running really high amps. Uh, I was running at like uh, over 25 amps and um, so I've repaired that 
and I'll, I'll check it again for heat in another 10 minutes or so. Right now it's doing really well. But the most interesting thing about it, I mean it's not that surprising but it's very interesting, is that instead of running at 12 amps it's now running at 14 amps. Um, that has nothing to do with the, the water getting hot, it's purely to do with that connection. So the connections are, are, are everything um, as far as making sure you're um, getting a good current going to your cell. Okay, I've now been running this for a little bit over an hour. It's running on 16 amps, which means that it's basically uh, increased about 2 amps purely because of the heat. Uh, it started off at 12, it's now 16. Two of those amps was because of a bad connection, because I got 2 amps back as soon as I fixed it. And um, so yeah, that leaves another 2 amps of increase. This connection is now pretty good, it's not hot. The warmest part on all of my connections is um, this terminal here is just a bit warm. Everywhere else is doing fine, there's no warm spots at all. Um, one interesting thing, I'm getting a, a cloud of mist, if you can see it directly. Um, it's not steam, um, the temperature of the water, I haven't got an actual thermostat so I can't tell you exactly, but it's basically the temperature of a warm, uh, of what you'd have a bath set at. Um, it's got a sodium hydroxide, I think that's right, yeah, sodium hydroxide as my electrolyte, so maybe there's some smarter people out there who can tell me what that is. It doesn't seem to have an odour of any sort, so whether or not it's the sodium hydroxide that's creating that, or if it's purely just the gas itself, or whether it is just heat because it, it is quite a cold day here, so I don't know, give me some answers. I'll open this lid so you can see just how much there is of it. Now it is a really cold day here, so it could very well just be, uh, some of that could be from heat, but the water isn't hot enough for it to all be that. It's, it's not boiling. Um, as I said, it's about the warmth to have a bath set at. Uh, I'm not having any troubles with foam. Once again, maybe that's because of the electrolyte that I'm using. Um, but this has not foamed up at all. Okay, it's now been uh, over another hour. This test has been going for over two hours now. Uh, interesting thing has happened. The amps were at 16 amps, and it's now dropped back to 14 and a half. Um, it's not because of any of these connectors. They're all still nice and cool. There's no loss, as far as I can tell, from any of that. Um, about half an hour ago, I'll open this up. About half an hour ago, I noticed that the water level had dropped below the top of the cell. So I added a bit more. It was only needed to add about a centimeter and a half. And as soon as I did that, the amps took off. They went up to about 17 amps. But then uh, after about five minutes, it dropped back down to 15. And now after half an hour, it settled down to 14 and a half. So that's interesting. Um, it could be because it's cold. It's now dark here. So it could be temperature that's done that. Um, I'm going to turn this off just in case anyone thinks this is boiling. You can see how quickly that goes away if I blow on it. Just get rid of the extra gas. You can see that there's only a tiny bit of mist there now. That The water is warm. It's about what you'd get out of a hot tap. And it is a cold night, so I expect it to have a little bit. But yeah, um, the water level is over the top of the cell. So all in all, uh, a very successful test. The water is really clear. I mean... That's tap water, and it's been running for over two hours. Um, all these terminals still look good. They're all in good condition. I know I have to run it for days and days for a true test, but all of my other cells were doing a lot worse than this at this stage. So, yeah, it's putting out about 650-odd millilitres a minute at 15-odd um, amps. And um, that's it for now. I'll take this out tomorrow and see how it's looking, see if it's falling apart at all, and take it from there. Till then, see you later.